there are things on my show that people get nervous about. What I don't, are they? Uh, what kinds of things? What are they? Well, you know, in the first season of Dear White People, there was this big moment in the middle of this comedy mm -hmm. that things get very serious. And, right. you know, one of our characters is confronted with their blackness and has a gun pulled on them in a situation where everybody else is free to have fun and whatever. And, um... There was a lot of conversation about it. And in this season, um, yeah, I mean, we just really were trying to push it even further than we did in the first season. And I kind of don't, it's really hard for me to like get it up if it's not a little scary. Like if I just feel like I'm like, mm -hmm. mm, I, I really, I can't, I kind of zone off. Very I start thinking about know. other you stuff. You want to be, <laughs> yeah. be I need it. fearful. It gives me some fire. Does yeah. the fact that it's become so in the news mm -hmm. help you to tell the stories? Or do you feel like, oh, that's... It can be a distraction. Because I think, like, at the end of the day, my job as a storyteller is to talk about the human condition. It's through my lens as a black person and through these kids' lens as, like, young black people. Uh, but, like, it has to be about something that we all can feel and touch upon. So sometimes it can actually be distracting because you want to, like, talk, talk about all of these things that are happening. But if it's not communicating something that's important to the story or the character, or something that's gonna last, mm -hmm. we gotta kind of filter it out. Who would have thought that I'd be smoking and drinking with Carlton Banks and a competent Colin Jost? <laughs> Shade. <laughs> Check out millennial Frederick Douglass calling me Carlton. <laughs> you dress like you got a tea top made up. <laughs> you dress like Che Guevara at Fashion Week. <laughs> what is this, the dozens? I do still put a bunch of pop culture references because I do want you to feel like you should have watched it when it came out. <laughs> but shame. at the shame. heart of it, yeah, I want you to feel so bad. So shame and fear. Yeah, shame I want and people fear. To just constantly yeah. feel ashamed. Yeah. Um, that's why it's a good goal. Dear white I appreciate people, it. And there's like a finger that's our. <laughs> I like it. Culture is a pendulum. It swings too far. Every direction it swings. I mean, I, I, it's like I'm on both sides because, like, you know. If you're part of any group that's been systemically oppressed, yes, I went there. <laughs> right. Um, you sort of, there are a lot of things that you feel like, man, my voice is not out there in the culture. Right. But we do go too far as human, you know? I think that um, in this particular instance, it's so tricky because I feel like with Twitter and social media, we're being really conditioned to think of things in very black and white terms. Yes. And like, we're human beings. We're capable of seeing the gray areas. We should be capable of holding multiple things at once. You know, yes. like, we, if we dig up some secret manuscripts, like, oh my God, William Shakespeare murdered and raped billions of Romeo and Juliet is still going to be happening, okay? Yeah. Like, yeah. no yeah. one's going to, like, stop doing that. But we just don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we should be able to both say, I don't accept this person's life. I don't have, have your boundaries. If you don't want to go pay to see the concert, cool. But then I don't think you should be put on blast for, like, watching a TV. TV show or I like agree. getting the artistry of something. The truth is that most of the details of personal lives of artists are lost to time. Mm -hmm. yes. So like yeah. a lot of this mm -hmm. is culture. A lot yes. of this is social media. Mm -hmm. A lot of this like I'm going to type this headline because it's going to give me a lot of clicks. Like the, a lot of it is that. Mm -hmm. And there's a line I don't know where it is. You know, we'll never be able to like hard set that line. But I think it's just part of the swing. You know what I'm saying? Like Trump was really extreme in one direction. Right. The liberals were gonna go super extreme in the other direction, and we're just right. gonna keep kind of doing this. But where are we on forward. that on that pendulum now? Do you guys think? I think women have been going through some bullshit for a long time. Yep. So I'm kind of okay with the overcorrection, just to keep it real. I think that there is a line, there's a danger, but I'm also happy that I'm an artist that I can talk about that in my Three work. Yes. Yeah. You know, because there is it, it. There's nuance to it. of industry pressure is there to have a lot of plates spinning versus just working on a single show? I mean, I'll just say, <laughs> I'll start. Um, you know, listen, I'm like a black guy in my mid-30s who has a TV show, so for me, I feel like if I ever get off the treadmill, like, I will just be doomed to obscurity. So, you know, I feel like I got here always juggling, as because you never know which one's going to be the thing that happens and like to think that I would get to do my show before other, like that blows my mind. So I'm, I feel like, I feel a lot of pressure to keep a lot of, a lot of plate spinning. For sure. What's going on is Justin Simeon from Dear White People. Hi, I'm Mike Shores. Hi, I'm Amy Sherman Palladino. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter YouTube channel. Don't look at the comments.